What's up everybody? So Morley Kurt recently made a video where he designed a stand and some luggage wheels for a one wheel. And today what we're gonna talk about is how you would design that if you wanted to take it into mass production 3D printing so that you can make it for a lot lower cost and at scale if a million people order it all from you in the same day. So Morley's video is a really great video. You should go over there and watch it with the other million people who have watched it already. But basically what he does is he tells a story about this problem that he had with one wheels. And basically the fact they are just really heavy. They are a motor and a bunch of batteries stuck together. And the only way of transporting it when it's not transporting you is to carry it around. And for some reason, luggage wheels have not been invented yet for the one wheel when you have to take them indoors or into a place where one wheels really aren't allowed. Morley runs through this in the case of a grocery store where he has to either throw it into a cart or lug it around. So he comes up with the idea of basically putting luggage wheels on the one wheel and then also giving it a kickstand so that you can park it in certain areas standing vertically so it doesn't take so much room inside of your apartment, which are all great ideas. And then Morley shows the process of iterating through the design of this, of how to mount this thing up to the board. But when he finishes, he comes up with a design that is a little bit short of manufacturable if he wanted to put it in production with mass production 3D printing. So we thought we would go ahead and just run through the list of how to make a fully final and manufacturable version of his one wheel stand with mass production 3D printing and print on demand. Now the biggest issue that Morley ran into in his video was the fact that he had to use very expensive material. The material he actually ended up using was a form of nylon that cost $100 a kilogram. When you're making something like this, a hundred bucks a pop might be a little bit much, even if you can reduce material by cutting it in other places. It's much better if you can use a lower grade material that is more reliable and more stable, because you also don't know if that really expensive material will continue to be available. So we decided to go ahead and go on the premise of we're gonna make this with PETG. PETG has good outdoor resistance. It's a nice durable material. It might be a little bit weaker than the uber carbon fiber nylon that Morley was using, but again, cheap. So it can actually be mass produced. You can produce this for a few dollars rather than a few dozen dollars in the opposite case. But in order to do that, the first place you need to focus on is the flap. And with the flap, we did a number of different things here to really optimize it. Morley ended up using basically just a single peg leg, which is fair and decent, but then he ends up having to have support on it. Removal of that support can really increase the cost of a part because somebody has to look at it and peck at it. Plus you're also wasting that material. Why not integrate that material into the actual part itself? By using a chamfer on the underside, you add more meat to the flap so that it blends into the one wheel better. It is stronger because there's more meat there and you eliminate the need for support. This can print right here vertically and you don't have any need for support anywhere. It's a much better way of getting the part out because it looks more professional. It is functionally better and you get to use what was otherwise wasted material in the actual finished part. So you've reduced the cost while getting so much more benefit out of it. Another place of reinforcing this hinge is rather than having it just be freestanding, go ahead and put a small rib on the inside there. That is not gonna be a problem when you're using this because it doesn't interfere with the wheels or anything else. But again, it reinforces this main part. So just a small strut, and you don't have to worry about through holes or anything. You can just blend this all in because with a 3D printed part, we get to use infill. Infill reduces any sort of large amount of material that would be used because all the strength is out in the skin anyway. 3D printed parts are a lot like I-beams. It's the center rib that has all the strength and the two outer flanges, and you don't need a solid bar of steel in order to have the same strength as an I-beam. The same applies for 3D printed parts. The other thing we did to optimize this a little bit more and to reduce part count, because parts increase assembly time and assembly cost and inventory hassle, all of this stuff. We went ahead and just merged together the center aisle. Morley had two separate pairs right here, which means that again, he had a lot of wasted support in between and a lot of wasted strength that would have been available. By blending that together, that enables the rib on the side and it ensures that you have fewer parts because now you just have a single through rod with nuts on the end and now you can mount up these wheels much more reliably with fewer parts and pieces. If we were taking this one step further, we could almost get rid of the outer flanges and just simply have the wheel mounted as a cantilevered axle, but that's going a little bit too far for this. But again, all it has to do with the wheels themselves is hold up the one wheel. So you don't really have to worry about those deforming. So that might be room for future iteration. And then you could eliminate the need for support up here and just a little of support down there, basically cutting support in half. 
Now, those are the design optimizations. Now, what would you do about the actual business model of this? Morley is a YouTuber who has just invented a thing, and now the thing has been refined for him. Now he's gotta start selling it. How would he do that? Well, fortunately, he has a giant print farm that he can just call up, and we have a Shopify plugin that just has Pet G released. We actually just released Pet G on our API, our Shopify, and our Etsy plugin. All of these things allow people to plug in our print farm to their Shopify store or their Etsy store. This allows 3D printing businesses to have access to a giant print farm without having to build and operate a giant print farm and ship tons of boxes. They can just upload a model, and whenever an order comes through, it is shipped out. It's a passive form of income, and you get to focus on making your customers happy and making really good parts. So in Morley's case, what he could do is he could create a Shopify store, and then he could connect to our plugin, upload this new and improved model, and then go ahead and create a listing for the wheels and the hardware, and then the actual 3D printed part itself. That way people could buy the plastic part, and then that order would come through to us and we would ship it out to the customer, and then the hardware kit could be sent by Morley, because we don't do a post assembly of third party parts there. Or the other option is, is that Morley could order a thousand of these and then sell them off over time, but then he has a big old risk of having to buy a thousand parts of inventory, and Morley is a van lifer, so he doesn't really want to store up a bunch of stuff. But he could go the print on demand route, and he would never have to look at any of this. And quite frankly, one wheelers could also just buy this hardware off of Amazon or something along those lines and just buy the plastic parts and then we would print and ship those. So there's a few different directions of getting this done. Now the question is, why wouldn't they just go with normal production techniques? Well, this type of a design can't actually be produced with traditional manufacturing because it's too chunky. It would shrink with all these thick walls on there. So you end up having to cut ribs into it and then you have these open sides and it looks really gross or you have to stamp it or carve it out of metal and now it's really expensive again. So 3D printing is a really good way of making this type of really functional and durable accessory because you're able to get a nice chunky design that has a lot of structure and reliability to it without a lot of Cost. And there's a few other pieces of magic that can be done here, even though this is a chunky design. And yes, we have infill throughout here, so you don't have to use a lot of material. If you want to reinforce a particular area, like say the back of this panel, where it's gonna wear on the pavement occasionally as people set it down or something along those lines, you might want this to actually be solid right here. Well, first of all, no other manufacturing process can make a part that is solid right here and hollow down here. That is just physically impossible. But at the same time, our plugins are a little bit limited too because they just have default print settings. You can't put a modifier on there where you say print this solid. But what you can do is go into the CAD and then you can input little microstructures. We talk about this in another video, but basically you can put very small, like half millimeter holes on the inside of the part here and those induce walls inside of the part so that now it's basically solid, even though you just had a bunch of walls printed. Not to mention the fact that at any time, once we get customer feedback on this, the design can be readjusted again and improved so that rather than being stagnant and literally cut into stone with a mold, it can actually be changed and evolved over time so that your product gets better faster than anybody else would ever develop it, especially if they wanted to try to run with molds. And lastly, if you're trying to make this part and you don't want it to look 3D printed because these layer lines aren't clean enough for you, the last thing we could do is go ahead and print this with a small amount of texture on it. In this case, it does require mass production because you have to do a batch of custom stuff there. But that way, it looks like a premium product. You can't tell that it was printed. So now you get this really heavily engineered and optimized part that has never been possible before, but it can be produced on demand and delivered straight to customers in a few days. Morley's video came out about September 15th, and we had finished this design about seven days after that. This is innovation at the speed of thought. New products can be created so quickly and put into production because now there's giant print farms available that can produce it. So Morley, if you're wanting to get access to these files and get the upgraded version of the one wheel stand, go ahead and hit us up and we'll just set you up with the Shopify store and you can go ahead and promote this to all of your folks because this is a really good idea. For everyone else, I hope this was an informative video to you about how to design a final finished mass producible product for 3D printing. There's a lot of nuance and a lot of tricks that you can get out of it that you can't get out of any other process. And there's a lot of optimization that can be done to any design in order to make it mass producible, make it look a lot better, make it look a lot tougher, and allow it to be produced for a lot lower cost.
So once again, if you want to go ahead and check this out or make something for yourself, or you have a Shopify store, we've just released Pet G on all of our services. So if you wanna just upload a model and get a print of it, that is now available from the API to our Shopify plugin to our Etsy plugin. So if you're a 3D printing entrepreneur and you've created a really cool invention, you can get it in production in about one hour. So you can focus on your customers and making better and cooler products. Have a great day, everybody.